Welcome to Power Machines N6. Today's presentation is going to be on nuclear plants. This is part of your module on steam plants. It's a section that has been added in the new syllabus and due to popular demand, I've decided to make a presentation on this section as well. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, this YouTube channel, I will advise you to do that. The reason is because that encourages me to continue to produce this kind of content. I have noticed that many people are watching the videos, but very few are actually taking the time to click on that subscribe button. It's a very quick thing to do, and yet that makes a big difference for me because it then encourages me to see that I actually have to continue to make this kind of content. So please subscribe to the channel so that you can help me as I am also helping you. Having said that, let's begin. Now, we will look at the ideal Rankine cycle, okay? Because when you're dealing with nuclear plants, there are two types of Rankine cycles that we will look at. The first one is the ideal Rankine cycle. And what we mean by that is that the work that is done through that cycle is isentropic. And this will make sense very soon, okay? So just bear in mind that when you're dealing with an ideal Rankine cycle, the work done is isentropic, okay? And so when we look at a turbine plant, okay, a turbine power generator, this is more or less what you will see. Of course, this is a simplified uh, diagram of the plant, but this gives you the important parts that you need to know as far as this module is concerned. I also want you to notice the direction of the arrows because that shows you how the water is circulating through the plant. Okay, so first we are here before the pump. And before the pump, what you have is feed water. And this feed water will go through the pump and the pump will push the water to this point here, which we will call two. And at two, the water will get inside of the boiler and it will come out of the boiler. And we will call that state here three. And at three, it goes into the turbine and out of the turbine, we will call the state of the water after the turbine four. Okay, now it's very important for you to be familiar with this numbering, okay, because when they ask you, for instance, to calculate the enthalpy before the pump, what they want you to find is H1. When they tell you to find the enthalpy after the boiler, after the boiler you are here, so what they want you to find is H3. If they ask you to find the enthalpy after the turbine, then what they ask you to find is H4, okay? They may also say find the enthalpy before the condenser. That is the same thing. After the turbine and before the condenser is the same thing. It is H4, okay? So you need to be very familiar with the direction of the flow of the water and also with the numbering, okay, of this particular cycle. So when we say one, we are after the condenser and before the pump. When we say two, we are after the pump and before the boiler. So it's either they can say find the enthalpy before the boiler or they can say find the enthalpy after the pump. It's the same thing. Okay, so please familiarize yourself with this because this will help you in solving the questions. Now, I am going to explain to you briefly how this plant works, okay? So initially, what you have here is feed water at one. And this feed water at one will then go through the pump. And the, the purpose of the pump is to add work to the water or to work on the water so as to push it to the boiler. That is the purpose of the pump. It's just to draw the water from one and push it all the way to the boiler. And so the pump here will add work to the water. And that is why where the pump is, we will say that there is an input of work. W in means that work is done on the water. Okay, so there is an input of work on the water so that the, the water can actually travel 
to the boiler okay so after the pump we are here at two and the water now goes inside of the boiler the purpose of the boiler is to boil the water basically so what will the boiler do the boiler will add heat to the water so where the boiler is we will say that there is heat that is coming in because heat is added to the water q is heat so q in means that heat is added to the water and that is exactly what the boiler does the boiler will add heat to the water until the water begins to boil and it becomes steam okay and after the boiler usually what you will have is superheated steam so here at three generally what you will have is superheated steam the water is no longer liquid as it went through the boiler it was turned to gas and indeed it was turned to superheated steam so at three here you have superheated steam and this steam is not only at a very high temperature but it is also at a high pressure and because the steam at three is at a high pressure you can then pass that steam through a turbine and the reason we can pass that steam through a turbine is because since the steam is at a high pressure it will rotate the shaft of the turbine because the turbine has got blades so as the as the steam is going through the turbine it will push against the blades and then as it pushes against the blades then the blades then will are connected to the shaft of the turbine and therefore the shaft of the turbine will begin to rotate why is the steam at three able to go through the turbine and then cause the shaft of the turbine to rotate is because the steam at three is at a high pressure so it can easily push against the blades of the turbine and those blades are connected to the shaft of the turbine and that will cause the shaft of the turbine to begin to rotate and as the shaft of the turbine is rotating that is mechanical energy so if you have a generator you can then convert that mechanical energy energy into electricity now here at the turbine because it is the steam that is doing work on the turbine then we can say that work is leaving the steam that is why we say at the turbine there is work going out okay because the work is going from the steam to the turbine it is the steam that is rotating the turbine the work is not coming into the steam okay but it's going out of the steam onto the turbine to cause it to rotate so this is work taken out of the water or out of the steam okay out of the steam and so here at the turbine we say that we have work out and now as this superheated steam goes through the turbine by the time it comes out of the turbine it will still be steam but it will not be superheated okay it may be superheated but not at the same high temperature that it was before so as the steam goes through the turbine it will lose in temperature okay but it will still be hot okay so it's either it can be wet steam after it has gone through the turbine or it can be dry saturated or slightly superheated but it will not be as hot as it was at three so the steam that you have at four is not as hot as the steam that you had at three at three here the steam is generally superheated but at four it can be wet or it can be dry saturated but it's still hot okay and it's still a gas and so now to be able to change it back to water so that you can repeat the cycle you need to take this steam at four and pass it through a condenser and you know the, pur the purpose of, of a condenser is to turn the steam back to liquid okay to turn the steam back to water in its in its liquid form okay and the way to do that is to take the heat out of the out of the steam and that is why where the condenser is we will say that heat is taken out of the water or out of the steam okay because steam is still water but it's water in the gas form okay so at the condenser we can say that heat is taken out of the steam and 
as you do that eventually the steam will now become a liquid again and you are back at one and now you have again water in a liquid form at one that you can then again push using a pump back into the boiler and then you repeat the cycle like that that is basically how a steam plant works and the nuclear plant is working in the exact same way the only difference is that when we say it is a nuclear plant it means that the fuel that we use for the boiler is not coal or some sort of uh, other fuel but it is uh, actually nuclear fission okay it's called nuclear fission that is where the energy is taken from okay that is why we will refer to it as a nuclear plant but if uh, what you used for the boiler was actually coal then that will just be an ordinary steam plant but the principle of functioning is the same okay so a nuclear plant the only difference between a nuclear plant and an ordinary steam plant is the where we draw the energy for the boiler for a normal steam plant the energy that is used for the boiler to actually boil the water is taken from coal or maybe from some other fuel but when you're dealing with a nuclear plant that energy is coming through nuclear fission okay nuclear fission it's f-i-s-s-i-o-n okay fission nuclear fission very important and so but the principle of functioning is the same as i said earlier and so Having said that, I can now begin to speak about enthalpies. So at one here, the enthalpy that we will have, of course, we will call it H1, okay? And this H1 is actually HF, because at one, remember, we have feed water. So the enthalpy that you will look for is liquid enthalpy. So H1 is an HF, and then at two, the enthalpy there is H2, okay? and after the boiler we are at three and here i already told you that when the steam comes out of the boiler it is superheated so the enthalpy that you have at three is superheated enthalpy and then after this superheated steam goes through the turbine and then you reach point four here and at four you will have an enthalpy that we will just call h4 now you will notice that for h4 i'm not telling you whether it's superheated or wet or what it's because it can have many different forms okay at four the enthalpy can be the enthalpy of wet steam it can be the enthalpy of dry saturated steam and so on so it's not always uh, uh, wet or always dry saturated okay it can change here but here at three the enthalpy that you have is generally superheated enthalpy that is why here i told you that h3 is actually a superheated enthalpy same with one at one it's always a liquid enthalpy so h1 is always an hf but at four here, I am not saying anything because it can change depending on the situation that you have. And so now let us look at the TS diagram for a situation like that. When you're dealing with a situation like that, you will find that uh, if you plot the TS diagram, by the way, TS, T stands for temperature and S for entropy. You've done power machines N5, you are already familiar with entropy. So if you plot the TS diagram for a situation like that, this is the graph that you are going to get, okay? It's going to look something like this. Now, with the TS diagram, what you need to understand is that the region that you have here on this side of the graph is the liquid region, okay? So any point that is in this region is liquid. Inside of the graph here, that region is wet, okay? Any point that you have inside here is wet. And on that side of the graph, the region is the superheated region. So anything that happens on this side is superheated, okay? Very important to understand that. And so this line here is what we will call the liquid saturation line, okay? This is the liquid saturation line from here, 
from here all the way to there. To watch the full version of this video, you need to be a member of this YouTube channel. So please click on the join button below and become a member of the channel. It is very affordable and you will be able to not only see this video in full, but you will also have access to many other videos. And if you have trouble joining, contact me on the number in the description below. Thank you so much.